Okay, so let's begin discussing about linear search and binary search algorithms. As the name says, linear search, where you assume that the given items to you is the item that you want to search. So a search key, that's your target, right? If you are said by your mom to go and shop in a grocery shop, uh, then you're given a list of items that you're supposed to pick. Or when you go for, um, let's say, you visit some of, you visit library, then you know what books do you want to pick from library, right? So you have the list of books you want to pick from library. So that's the items that you are supposed to search that's given to you. That's your search key, that's the target and you are given an unsorted array. It can be an array, it can be a list, basically an unsorted blob of items. So when you visit a library, you have like so many books there, uh, which are mostly arranged in sorted, some sort of sorted order in most of the libraries. So you wouldn't say it's unsorted, um, but let's assume that if the items are unsorted, still you can search your items, right? Like when I visit a grocery store, I almost feel like items are unsorted. Every item is like here and there. When you visit Walmart, the items are sorted in the in the aisle in terms of some categories, but then within the aisle, you don't know what that sorting order is. So you got to go and search for the item. So for our linear search, we would assume that the items given to us, they are just unsorted. They are like, the clothes that comes out of your dryer after your laundry. So they're like unsorted, all mixed. And then you are supposed to fold these clothes and arrange in the cupboard, right? So something, um, a process to go there. So you are given an unsorted array, unsorted list or a blob of items. What would a linear search do? A linear search would first start from the beginning of the array, if an array is given to you. So let's say if our array has items such as unsorted items, six, nine, two, one, five, eleven. This is our array. The linear search will start from the beginning of the array and compare the value at the i so if your array A is equal to this, then we would compare if A of I is equal to the target that's given to you. So let's say that K is your target. That's the item that you are searching for. Then you will, you will search the, you will compare if the first item in that array that's given to you is equal to target. If it is, yes, then you will return that item that, hey, the, in, the, I, the index where I found this item is I, you return that. If not, then you would increment the index I by one and you would again repeat the same step. So you would repeat until the target is found or the list being searched is empty. You will keep on incrementing, let's say in this case, your K is equal to nine. So you will in increment the I by one more time. And in the second iteration, you will find that your A of I is equal to nine. So you would return the index, which is you found this is index zero, this is index one, two, three, four, five. You would return index one, which is your I that I found this item in this array at index i. So what about the efficiency of this linear search? Can anybody say what is the time complexity of a linear search? If you have completed all the to-do items of your previous module, then by now you should be able to compute time complexities. And uh, finding the time complexity of linear search is something very simplistic. So I believe each, every one of you is ready with your answer. And if it's an in 
person class, then I would have like a chorus answer from her class, correct? Okay, I, I believe you are shouting out your answer and you're ready with that. So the time complexity of linear search is big O of N. If there are N elements in the array that you are searching, because you got to start from the beginning of the array until you reach the end of the array. So you are doing N comparison operations. The key operation in this is the comparison. The A of I is equal to equal to K. That operation is your key operation. And you are repeating it for N times in worst case to find out your item because the item that you are searching in worst case could be the last item, right? So that's where the time complexity is big O of N. How about the space complexity? Do we also have a chorus answer for space complexity? Yes. I believe all of you are ready with the answer um, of the space complexity. As we just discussed, the space complexity is how much amount of space this algorithm is going to consume while you run it. Now, while running this algorithm, if we are given n element, then we are not occupying any more space than n. We are just doing comparison and we are not um, occupying additional space. And that's why this is in place algorithm. And the space that it occupies is same as big O of n. The space complexity of algorithm is also big O of n. If there are n items, then in order to run a linear search, you need to store this n items in order to compare and n is the space in worst case that it would occupy. Let's look at another example. Let's say that if your array A is equal to these items, these nine items with uh, each items at this particular index of the array and you are performing a linear search for finding the item with your target where k is 23, then can you write an algorithm for performing a linear search? This is something where if you are reading the reading, if you are completing your reading assignments, if you are watching all the videos, then by now we assume that you should be able to write pseudocode for any task that's given to you. So if you understand the problem, I think this problem is very clear. You should be able to write pseudocode. You should be able to write, um, you first you should be able to write the before, even before writing pseudocode, we need to first frame the algorithm. So we need to frame the logic of the con context. Okay, go. So first we need to frame the logic of the algorithm, right? What all things you want to do, something like this here is your algorithm. Then after you have your algorithm, then you write the pseudocode, which is more near to the programming language that you want to write your code into. So pseudocode may not have some header files, but it will capture the logic in terms of, in context of programming. And after you have your pseudocode, you can write your actual code in any language, particularly during, the, during this course, we'll be writing our codes in C++. And we have already seen how to write codes in the previous um, lecture of this class. We have seen how to write C++ code. Um, you should be able to write your own pseudocode. And mostly in the upcoming modules of this class, we will be discussing how to frame algorithms. So we'll be concentrating more on understanding the logic behind the operations or behind the things that we are doing 
once you understand the logic, then the routine assignment of converting the algorithm to pseudocode and converting the pseudocode to C++ code is something that will rely upon your coding skills. So this is something that you should have already developed and inculcated by now by practicing the programming codes that we discussed in our previous modules and previous lectures. And you should be well versed with this. So if you are given the algorithm, if you are given something like this, then you are expected that from this, you can write an actual C++ code that can be compiled and executed and you can give actual input to that and you can get an output from that. Okay, so that's something that you will be doing on your own. And this should be something very simple. So each one of you should be able to do on your own. Convert this uh, basic algorithm that's given, to, given here for linear search into a C++ code, execute, compile and execute that C++, C++ code give this array as input to that C++ code and try to search for an item where you give target as k equals to 23. Additionally, what you will be doing after you have this code, do your own write C++ code. After you have this code, while you are executing this code, after you compile successfully without errors, and while you are executing, you will measure the runtime. Then what I want you to do is compare this, depending upon the item that you are searching in this unsorted list, compare the time that it takes. So it would be interesting to notice that if your item is the first item in the list, it will take lesser time. If your item is the last item in the list, it will take more time. And then we know that theoretically, the worst case complexity is big O of n, right? So then increase your n, increase the size of the array, and you can play something more interesting, such as when you are increasing n from 10 to 20 to 30, then the number of elements get increased. And if you are searching the last element in all this, then your time, runtime, also should increase in the fashion in the linear order with respect to this. And that's how you can say that your runtime is of the complexity, big O of n. This is all fun things to play with and to program and learn. So learn it hands-on while working and understanding these concepts. Next, let's see the topic of binary search. So while we are, binary search is one of the advanced search. Let me change the color of the marker. Let's use blue. So binary search is one of the advanced search that we'll be discussing. Now, in order to, like, why do we call it as advanced search? First, it is a bit more complex than the linear search. Second, like, what's the point of having more complex things if you don't have uh, that as more advantageous things, right? A complex things is expected to be more better than the simple or the brute force things. So the linear search was a brute force way of searching where you just go from the beginning and in a brute force manner, you keep on comparing all the elements until the end of items. And whenever you get the item that you are searching, you return. But that has a complexity of big O of N. Can we do the same operation of searching an item with lesser time, with better complexity? That's what gives us an advanced searching algorithm such as binary search. Now, in order to perform binary search, there is one very important thing that each of you should remember. You cannot perform binary search on an unsorted array. You would need a sorted array to perform binary search. If you are given a sorted array, 
then you can perform binary search on that sorted array. If you are given an unsorted array, first you would have to sort the array and then you can perform a binary search on that. So having an input of a sorted array is very important. As we briefly talked about earlier, that while you are searching items in your wardrobe, if your items are sorted and arranged in some particular fashion, searching for items would become much easier, right? Also in a library, because the books are arranged in some kind of sorted fashion. So searching the book that you want, although there are like thousands of book in a library, thousands of book in just one floor of library, but still you will be able to search one particular book that you are that you are looking for. And it wouldn't take you like days to find that. Rather, it's pretty fast. And what's making it fast is because these things are stored in some kind of sorted order. So in the same way, binary search is designed to take advantage of this sorted order. So in order to perform binary search, it's important that the items are stored in a sorted fashion. And uh, other given thing is definitely the search key that's our target or the key that we want to search. So you, while you go to search, while you want to pick a book from library, you should know which book you are looking for, either by, either by the title or by the author. For example, you are looking for our textbook, Introduction to Algorithms in our, libra in our, in our FIU library, and you want to pick a book from, like search that book in our library. So you know what is your key, you know what is your target, textbook is your target. So these two items needs to be given in order to perform a binary search. Now, what does binary search do? So let's look into the algorithm of binary search. First step of the binary search, we will find the midpoint of an array and compare the value at that midpoint, which is A of M to the target K. So let's assume that the array that's given to you consists of 10, 3, 1, 5, 16, 2, 9. Can we perform binary search on this array A? We can, right? Wrong. So if you are thinking we can, then probably you were sleeping last 10 minutes of this lecture where I was explaining that sorted array is something we need to perform binary search. So as soon as you see this array, your answer should be, oh no, wait, this is not a sorted array. So how can we take this as an example to binary search? If your reaction is that, then well, welcome on board. You are with me in this flight. So we cannot take this as our example, but rather we would need something that's sorted to take as an example while performing our binary search. So our example can be something like A is equal to two, six, nine, 10, 11, 50, 100. So this array has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It has seven items from 0 to 6. And we are supposed to search, let's say, for example, item uh, RK target is 50. So what we do in binary search is something very intuitive. You would be doing binary search in many items that you search in your routine life. What do we do? When you know that things are sorted in some order, then you go and attack the, send, the item that's at the center of that uh, sorted list, that's all sorted array that's given to you. So what we do is we look at the midpoint and here the midpoint is nothing but uh, because we have seven items, we can say our midpoint is three, which is seven by two, right? So what we did was zero plus six by two 
and that's how we got that's equal to that's equal to three. So we went to the item at index three, that's our midpoint, that's our M. And then we searched, then what we would do in a binary search is that we'll compare if A of M is equal to equal to K, whatever we are looking for. If it's equal to K, well, our job is done, right? You, you just went into a, something to search something, you just went right inside the store and you saw that right up front. You grab that and you exit. Definitely you pay for that and then exit. But still the job of searching is done. Um, but if it's not equal to that, then you have collected some very intelligent or very intellectual information over here. Where if it's not equal to that, but if the item that you are searching for, which is K is lesser, then equal to A of M. A of M is 10. So the item that we are searching for is 50. If it is lesser than A of M, then you know in that case, the item would be lying in the left part of this list because this list is, this array is sorted array. But if not, if the item is greater than A of M, which is in this example, that's the case, then you know that definitely this item will be lying in the right part of this sorted array. And there is no chance that you'll find this item in the left part of this sorted array. So then what's the point of searching the left part, right? You have reduced your job to half directly just by this intellectual uh, logic that you have found out. So what you do in that case is you discard the other half and depending upon if your K is lesser than or equal to M or K is greater than or equal to M, you search only the half that's relevant. If K is lesser than or equal to M, you search the left half, which is A of zero to A of M minus one, right? That's zero to M minus one. You will search only that. If a K is greater than or equal to M, the target that you're looking for is greater than your midpoint, which is in our case, that's the case. Then you would look for the items from A of M plus one, to the end of the list, whichever. So if there are n items, your end of list will be n minus one because your array index starts from zero. And you would repeat this, uh, so on and so forth. So after that, if you found out that, okay, I'm searching the right half of this list, luckily in this example, we will find our answer at the second iteration of this algorithm itself because of the second iteration, your next, uh, midpoint A of M will be the item that you're looking for and you would return. But if not, let's say if you were looking, if you were not looking for 50 and if we were looking for um, 11, then in that case, in your second iteration, what you would do is you would again repeat the same step. You would find a of M in this, in there. So there it will be your um, five is your M. Your A of M will be 50 and you will compare K with A of M. So what you would do is if your K is less than A of M, you will search only the left part of this. If your K is greater than A of M, you will search only the right. Because if your K is 11, then you will search only the left part and your left part is just one item in this case. So in your third iteration, you will find yourself in a condition where your A of M is equal to equal to K in your third iteration. And that is how we keep going on and on. So if you analyze the pattern in which we are proceeding, Every time we are discarding half of the list. In our first iteration, we discarded half. In our second iteration, we discarded another half. And because our array is small here, we don't have like more than third iterations. We have only three iterations. 
But in real life, your array can be thousands of elements. So there can be many iterations while searching an item in that thousands of elements. And in at every iteration, you are discarding half of whatever you are searching. In the way you can imagine this as taking a big uh, pumpkin or taking a big butternut, butternut squash and then cutting it into half. And then you have the half piece, you cut again that into half and then half and half and so on and so forth. So that's your order of progression. Let's again, uh, so now you know the algorithm, right? You know the algorithm and your algorithm should be clear after this discussion over here. Now let's write the code for that algorithm. And then to this C++ code, give this as an example, give your A as this. Can we run a binary search on this array? Yes, we can, because this array is sorted array. Although it has negative integers, doesn't matter. It's still, still sorted. Minus seven is lesser than three, three is lesser than five and so on and so forth. That's why we can run binary search on this array. And let's again take if your k is 23. So uh, write your C++ code. Compile it. Make it error free. Compile it in a way that it compiles in an error free manner. and then run it with this example and observe the runtime. Also, you can play further with making your own more examples and then observing the trend of how runtime behaves with those examples. So play with that. Play with your C++ code. Again, if we look at one more example, where we are looking here, like if you, once you have this code over here, C++, C++ code ready that compiles well and executes well, then for the same array, which is A as whatever we used in the previous example with nine elements. If you give target as 22, now observe that 22 doesn't exist in this, in this area that's given to you. So what happens in that case? So first we would find our midpoint where M is equal to uh, first plus last by two. So that's zero plus eight by two, that's four. So your midpoint is this. There are multiple ways of finding midpoint. You can do last minus first by two as well, but whatever you are doing, follow the same order because if you do in one iteration, if you do one thing, and then if you change emits while computing your iterations, that will give you some kind of error because you won't be considering some of the elements in that case. So you can use this formula first plus last by two to find out your mid. In that case, your mid is four. So you go to the A of four, your M is four. And then you compare if K is equal to is equal to A of M. In this case, this is not true, right? So because it's not true, then we see, okay, if it's not equal, then say me if k is lesser than a of m. If k is lesser than a of m, then we will search the left part of the list. But in this case, even that's not true. So finally, we'll ask it to search if k is greater than a of m. And this is what is true in this case, where our k is 22, which is greater than 12. And that's where we'll say that, okay, then next perform the binary search over the right part of the array. So we'll say step three, will be search 
right half. Where we can say further as your right half. So now your new midpoint, in order to search your right part, your new midpoint M will be equal to, again, first plus last by two. But see, observe that your first here, right? Now in your second iteration, your first is this item and your last is this item. So what's changing from first iteration to the second iteration is your first pointer. In your first iteration, your first was this item. And now in your second iteration, when K is greater than A of M, you want to change your first. So what we would say here, if this is true, in order to search the right part, we will say first is equal to M plus one. Once you have your first set at M plus one, which is your new location, then you say that, okay, then now again, search this. So you can, because it's an iterative algorithm, automatically next time when you go from after you do this in the second iteration, when it comes over here, it will consider as this first, it will consider this new location and your last remains the same. So in your second iteration, it will, what it will compute is five plus eight by two. which is 13, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 by two, and that's equal to six. So your M in your second iteration will be your item at the sixth index, which is 23. And now because it's 23 in your second iteration, you will find out that, okay, again, your K is not equal to M. So this is incorrect. It's you're looking for 22, but uh, A of M is 23. And now in your second iteration, your K is lesser than M. So this will be correct in your second iteration. So you will search the left half of this array in your next iteration. But well, that's a realization that there is no left half left, right? This, you already searched until five, and now you are searching, you are seeing that this is, there is the 23 is greater than the item that you are searching. And there is no item on the left of 23 in your sub array. So that's the place in your second iteration. Then when this is not true, your equal to condition is not true. Your lesser than condition is true. And in that case, when you find out your new M, when you are looking at the left half of the list, you will replace or reposition your last pointer. So you will say last is equal to M minus one. And when you say your last is equal to M minus one, at that time, your last and first, both will point at the same location, five. And if your last is equal to first, and if you have not founded your item that you are looking for, that's probably a call to exit or call to say that, okay, the item that you are searching for, that does not exist. So this is very important to know that if your first is equal to equal to last, then return false or the item doesn't exist, exist, something like that. Print, the item doesn't exist, return false, something like that. So this is the condition that will say you, um, that will make the algorithm realize that the item is not there in the list. Let's look into a pseudocode of this algorithm. So while writing the pseudocode of this algorithm, as we know, as an input argument, you will need, uh, if you have already written your C++ code while uh, we discussed this part over here in this lecture, then you should be ready with filling these blanks over here. 
and you should have them correct if your code executed and it ran and it gave you the answer. But let's revise. So your binary search will take two input. First is array, second is target. You will need this as something that's given to you. So these are two input arguments. You would have to initialize your first as zero because your index of array start from zero. Your array starts at zero index and you will initialize your last as size of array. There can be multiple ways of computing the size of array or you can assume that size is given to you as an input argument as well. So either you will, either you will have in your C++ code, either you will have your size as given to you in the input argument, or you will compute the size of an array um, in, some, in some manner. And then you will say your last element is equal to array.size, minus one because your index is starting from zero. So that's where it's size minus one. So if you have nine elements, your size is uh, your array first is zero and your array last is eight. If you have 10 elements, your array first is zero, your array last is nine. Um, there are many ways to do this in your C++ code. Then you will have a while loop. That's the most important part of your binary search. What you are doing in this while loop while first is less than equal to last. As we discussed that your exit condition is if your first is equal to equal to last, that means, um, well, you have searched everything and the item doesn't exist. But sometimes you might also end up in a situation where your first, where your uh, last is smaller than first. So this is a condition where your pointers are inverted. That's also one of the invalid condition to end up into. And if you end up in that condition, probably the item that you're searching for doesn't exist and there is no point of searching that item. So if your array, uh, if your pointers are inverted where your last pointer is smaller than the first pointer, or if your last pointer is same as your first pointer, right? Either it's smaller or it's same, then you are done with your search. So that's way we'll continue this while loop until, right? Until your first pointer is smaller than the last. So only if this is true, then we will continue the while loop. As soon as this condition is false, then we will exit. Now, inside this while loop, what are the steps that we are doing? We are finding the midpoint, right? We are finding what is the uh, mid value in, our, in your algorithm that you are writing and how do we compute the mid value? Simple, by now this should be very clear. We are doing first plus last by two. That's your mid value. Once you get your mid value, you compare your mid value uh, with array or here we are assigning a new variable named mid value, assuming that you have declared this variable somewhere outside and we are saying that's equal to array mid, but you need, you does not, you do not need mid value variable and you can directly use array mid. So from a pseudocode, from an algorithm, there are many ways to write pseudocode. From a pseudocode, there are many ways to write a C++ code itself. And you have those assumptions and flexibility while you're writing C++, C++ code that includes something like this. Either you can have a different variable or you can directly use array mid over here rather than having a separate variable for that. In case if you have a variable, then ensure that you declare the initialize the variable before you use it somewhere. So here we are using the mid value variable where we say if target is equal to equal to mid value, then return mid, right? We have found our item, whatever we are searching for. But if it's not true, then else if target is smaller than mid value, that means our k is smaller than a of m, then we are searching left half of the array because whatever we are looking for is surely going to lie in that left half. There is no point of searching the right half. So in that case, when you are searching 
if you are given an array and you're uh, you're comparing with the mid value this is a sorted array and you want to next search the left half then what's the pointer that you are moving initially your pointers the first pointer was your and your last pointer was your so if you want to search the left half in the next iteration which pointer you should to, you need to move the last pointer right this is the pointer you need to move and what position you need to move it to what will be the answer over here i hear a very chorus answer from all of you at once shouting at me and that's last is equal to mid minus 1 else in that case in the third case where your target is neither equal to mid nor lesser than mid then your third case is your target will be greater than mid right so that's the only case left so you don't need to check that condition again you can just have else in that case your target is in the right portion of your array and which array which pointer you need to change if your target is in the right array right part of your array first pointer right because then you want to relocate first to a location over here. So your first is equal to mid plus one. And that's it. So once you do this, um, depending on one of these condition, it will go into the second iteration and it will keep going into an iteration one after other until it either finds the value or it violates this while condition that we have here. In either case, if it finds the value, then it will exit from this first from this first if condition. If it violates this while condition over here, it will exit from there. And finally, we just return. So this is your uh, iterative program for binary search. In our next module, we are going to see binary search in a recursive fashion after we discuss the concept of recursion as well. So last long with your concept of binary search and do not forget what binary search means. Finally, after you have understood the concept of binary search, after you have written algorithm for that, after you have written pseudocode for that, and after you have C++ code, which compiles and execute well to perform binary search, then let's look at its analysis or the efficiency of binary search. So for example, if you are having an input size of n items in your array, then what is the basic operation that you are performing while you are performing binary search? What was the basic operation that you perform while you are performing linear search? Can you recall that? Comparison. Comparison was the basic operation. Now, is that also the basic operation while you are performing the binary search? Yes, even in binary search, our basic operation is number of keys compared or comparison. So in the best case, which is your omega, right? Your best case complexity is one. In your first iteration itself, you just do one comparison and you find hola, you find the element that you're looking for as that A of M and you are done with your work. So that's the best case complexity, but not always the world serves you the best, right? So if your, your best case complexity will something be, for example, in this case, if this is your array and your target is 12, then you start with your binary search and first iteration itself, because your M is four, you will end up with the case where K is equal to is equal to A of M and you will exit. So there is only one comparison operation that you have to do, done. But if that's not the best case, then in that case, how do we find the worst case? If our example doesn't serve us with the best case uh, scenario, let's say if your K is not the middle, then what happens in your worst case and what's the complexity, uh, worst case complexity? So the list is split down to zero, 
without finding a match. That's your worst case, where the worst case is a situation where we found in this example where we didn't have, right? Where we didn't have that item in the list. And that's your worst case. In that worst case, how many comparisons did you do? Recall this example where we didn't find our item in the list. How many comparisons did you do? Did you compare or did you do N comparisons? No, right? Even in the worst case, you didn't have to do N comparison to find out that the item doesn't exist in the list. Rather, you did something less than N. And how do you know how many comparisons did you do? The order of that is of log of n because every time you are log to the base two of n particularly. And why is this? Because every time you are taking an item and you are chunking it into half and then you take the half and then you chunk that into half and then you take that half of half and chunk further that into half. So the progression in which you are going is log to the base two of n. And that's why in worst case, the time complexity of performing a binary search on a sorted array is big O of log of n, which by now you should know after learning the time complexity lecture that big O of log of n is much better time complexity than big O of n. So our binary search is much better than our linear search. But the catch here is for binary search, you need a sorted array. While for linear search, you can do it on unsorted array as well. That's it for our searching concepts. Both linear search and binary search were covered in this video lecture. If you have any further questions, then please see me in my office hours. Thank you.